Lightly Opinions. If you're new, I'm Tamara, and today we're going to talk about five myths and misperceptions about blindness. Let's skip the whole preamble today. Let's just jump in. Myth number one, blind people see blackness. There is a perception and ongoing myth that either you are fully sighted or fully blind. If you're partially sighted, you must be faking being blind. Well, that just isn't the case. Only 10% of people who are blind see absolutely nothing. Other than that, the remaining 90% have some level of remaining vision. Like many things in life, blindness is an incredibly broad spectrum. There are many people with a wide variety of visual abilities that are considered to be blind. Anyone with vision worse than 20 over 200, which is anyone who can only see the big E at the top of an eye chart at an optometrist's or eye doctor's office, is considered to be legally blind. And there is a whole spectrum from 20 over 200 all the way to seeing absolutely nothing at all. If someone has a visual acuity of 20 over 200, they can still see things. They just can't see things to the detail or clarity that you can. People are also considered legally blind if they have perfect vision, so 20-20 vision, in a very narrow field of vision. So they may not be able to see anything to their periphery, but if they have a very narrow field of vision somewhere in the center or off to the side, they are still considered legally blind. The government considers that type of visual deficit from 20 over 200 to nothing to be significant enough that it is impacting a number of daily tasks that you will not be able to drive and that you're going to need adaptive technology and specialized training to be able to deal with visual loss. That's not to say that people who have visual impairments, so anyone from less than 2020 all the way to 2100 vision, are not going to have difficulties doing some tasks. It's just an arbitrary guideline that the government has set up. Now, when you're talking about somebody who has no vision whatsoever. They don't see blackness. If you have never had vision, it can be incredibly difficult to understand what visual perception is. You're not seeing blackness or whiteness, you're just not seeing. I've heard people describe it as, what is it like when you look into the back of your head? It just isn't. It's not blackness or whiteness, it just isn't. When I try and describe my peripheral vision, where I have no visual perception whatsoever, I don't see anything. It's not like I'm seeing through a black tunnel, I just don't perceive anything. Let's get on to myth number two. All blind people use a cane or guide dog. A significant proportion of people who are considered blind use no mobility tools whatsoever. They use their remaining vision or what visual perception that they have to get around safely. Only about 5% of people who are blind use guide dogs. And the purpose of a guide dog is to work as a team to navigate an environment safely. The dog will take you around objects in as straight a line as possible. With canes, only about 2 to 8% of people who are considered blind use canes. And the function of a cane is to provide tactile information about your environment, whether that's the type of floor you're walking on or the obstacles in front of you before you run into them. One type of travel isn't better than the other, they're just different. If you're interested in how canes and guide dogs work and some of the benefits and drawbacks to both, I have a video coming out very soon, so stay tuned for that. Myth number three. Blind people can't read print. Again, this just isn't true. Most people who are blind can still read print using their remaining vision. They may use modifications to be able to read that print, whether that is magnifiers or bringing regular size print closer to their face or needing appropriate lighting to be able to read that, but most people can still read some print. If you do not have enough vision to be able to read print, you are not entirely isolated from being able to read. There are a number of different technological and adaptive options that people who cannot read print do use to access printed materials. One of the most common forms is used by both sighted and blind people, and that is audiobooks. Audiobooks are a great way to access printed materials without actually having to read them. If you need to access printed materials in your daily life, there are a number of other technological options. 
You can use an app like Be My Eyes to call a volunteer to ask about specific visual information, whether that's reading a prescription bottle, who a letter is from, or a note from a friend. My personal favorite are apps that actually do it for you. Artificial intelligence and optical character reading devices are getting really, really advanced. So I like using apps like Microsoft's Seeing AI, which is actually free to download to access a lot of my printed materials. I'm gonna put a demonstration of this app up on screen right now so you can see as my boyfriend writes a note that it will translate that into audio form so I can access it as well. Take picture, but processing. PK boo. Myth number four. All blind people are unemployable, unemployed, and rely on social security or social benefits. In other words, that's saying blind people are a burden on society. Blind people can enjoy any career a sighted person can. I feel the only limitations are those which involve driving. And hopefully with the development of automated vehicles within the next few years, that won't even be a limiting factor anymore. There are blind people employed in any field you can imagine. There are blind doctors, there are blind lawyers, there are blind scientists, administrators, mathematicians, welders, carpenters, the list goes on. Just because someone can't see doesn't mean that they aren't capable of doing a task. With the right interventions, I believe that people can achieve whatever they set their mind to. It is important to mention the unemployment rate in the blind community because it is significant. 70 to 80% of people who are blind are unemployed. I feel very conflicted to talking about this objectively because I have personal biases. So please take these next statements as my personal opinion. As someone who has entered the job market, who has had multiple careers, who has actively searched for employment, there appears to be an active discriminatory practice. There is an inherent bias against people with disabilities. Employers see limitations before they see possibilities. And that's not to say that there aren't good employers out there who are willing to accept people who are blind or low vision. That is just to say that there is a prevalent belief that blindness leads to incapability. So as I entered the job market, I found myself having to defend my blindness and explain how I would do the job before I was ever given an opportunity to try to do the job. I am hoping that an increased awareness of the disability community, the blind community, and the capabilities that we have will decrease some of those discriminatory practices and ultimately lower the unemployment rate. Myth number five, all blind people can read braille. If you missed my video last week talking all about Braille and how it works, you already know some of these statistics. If you missed it, check it out. I'll link it in a card above and in the description box down below. Most blind people don't know how to read Braille. In fact, less than 10% of blind people are learning or have learned Braille. There are so many reasons why blind people are not learning Braille or are not given the opportunity to try Braille, but I think that's beyond the scope of this video. Suffice it to say that it is an incredibly bulky language. There is a belief, despite evidence, to suggest that Braille, in fact, increases employability, increases grammar and literacy skills, whether you have some remaining vision or not, and that it is fundamentally important to understand the language, the rate for learning Braille is incredibly low. As we mentioned before talking about print, if you can get by reading print to some degree, that's what most people do. But there is a drawback. For many people who are blind or low vision, reading is a much slower process of decoding than it is for somebody with normal vision. It can be incredibly taxing on your eyes, and if you have an astigmatism or other optic conditions that mean that you can't focus very well, it can be incredibly draining and taxing. Braille is an amazing resource if you want to give your eyes that break or if you want to improve your literacy skills or your reading rate. While I do read Braille and I was given the opportunity to learn, it can be incredibly difficult to find somebody who knows Braille, a TVI or a Braillist or somebody who can teach Braille skills because it is that dying language. So safe to say that I am a huge advocate for learning Braille for anyone in the school system right now, whether you have remaining vision or not. And I think it should be incorporated more, like ASL classes, in many mainstream schools. 
It's a skill that's great to have, whether you need it currently or not. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new about blindness. If you like content like this, please don't forget to subscribe, hit those bells and buttons down below, leave me a comment, I'd love to hear from you. If you want to keep up with me between posts, I have an accessible Twitch stream every Tuesday and Sunday night, 7.30 Mountain Standard Time. I also have my Twitch streams now uploading to a new YouTube channel, which will be linked on screen and in the description box down below. And I have my other social media accounts where you can keep up to date with what's going on in my daily life. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Bye for now.